Zach, it's great to see you again, man. It's great to see you. How you doing, brother? I'm great, man. Thank you so much for talking with me about Rebel Moon Part 2. This one was actually, this was like a war epic, whereas the first one was kind of like, let's get the team together, let's do this sort of heist thing. Like, now we have this, like, I mean, I actually wasn't my first question, but I want to start there. Was that <laughs> always kind of by design, the idea to have the contrast between these films be that where this is, like a war epic conclusion of sorts to, yeah, the, to this two-part saga? Yeah, absolutely. It was always going to be, uh, we were going to get back to the village, we were going to bring in the harvest, and then it was going to be a war. Oh, man, that, those sequences where they're having the battles on Velt. Like, first of all, I thought the design of the action sequences, not just literally like the choreography, but like when these explosions are happening, where there's surprises that you didn't lay out to us in advance, that we're seeing the plan that was made without the audience knowing. I thought it was awesome. So how did you come up with sort of the, the offensive defense that Velt is on? In this yeah, that was kind of that was a tricky part. Like I feel like I, we delayed a lot of it out, and I think I just kind of had to. It was it was the process of having to go through and really kind of get your like play chess, you know, with the pieces and understand how we were going to trick the audience and trick, um, you know, the the uh, forces of the mother world into thinking one thing and then you know getting. Uh, another and knowing the stakes and understanding uh, that the that the Veltians had a teeny bit of that they had the chips in their corner which were the which was the grain and the you know the of course the mother world has the the just pure power so it was a fun balance to kind of play those 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 elements against each other. It was awesome. I, you, I've heard a lot of people talking about the grain. I mean, from the first time we saw the trailer, you guys talked about how you really grew so much grain. Was this technically then the biggest set ever, maybe? Because you guys had so much It was the biggest set that really? I've ever been involved with because, yeah, it was like acres and acres and acres of wheat we planted. Um, so all that wheat's real, mostly. And, uh, yeah, it was, so it was, uh, it was a huge, um, it was a huge, not not challenge, but a huge opportunity because we could we were able to make those big giant harvesting shots that were completely real, and that was re that was really fun. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Sophia and McKeel were telling me earlier that there was a stunt that they did themselves where they got launched and they landed on a trampoline and they did the stunt themselves. Uh, what, in your opinion, was sort of the most intense stunt you had one of your cast members uh, do in Rebel Moon? Um. Yeah, uh, let's see. I mean, yeah, it's probably Sophia and Ed um, on the tilting table. We had built this big set that was on hydraulics, and they had to slide down it and fight. And it was really tricky uh, to work on. And they, they did an amazing job because, like, there was pads at the bottom, but if they missed the thing, they just tumbled down. So there was a couple of times when they were all the way, all the way down at the bottom of it, you know. So are you talking about this? I don't want to spoil anything, but you're talking about in this movie when they were kind of like... Yeah, you know, they're kind of sliding that, down. Really yeah. yeah, so that was a oh, big... Oh, that is so cool. We built this big tilting floor that they had to slide down and fight, so it was quite kind of crazy. Oh, dude, that is so cool. Um, all right, so I, by the time this movie wraps up, there is clearly like ideas for where it could go. It gets my, my head going like, oh, wow, we could kind of explore this storyline. If Netflix says tomorrow, like, hey, we want Rebel Moon 3, you know, let's go do this. How long does that take now to get this next chapter out there? If we uh, I, I don't think it would take too long because we, uh, you know, Kurt and I and Shay, we've, we've got, we know exactly where the story goes. We've got it all figured out. You know, it's all whiteboarded out. And uh, I've even written probably the first, like, 20 pages of the, of the third movie. So, yeah, it wouldn't, be that, it wouldn't be that big of a deal to get to it. But, you know, we'll see. No, no big deal. We could just crack it. No, but yeah, all right. You make it sound easy. It's I know it's, it's not easy. It's not, I wouldn't say it's easy, but we can yeah. we, we can get to it. <laughs> dude, well, I, what I'm, I, I want to see you do a Gears of War movie, dude. I know uh, you talked about that, but uh, what's what? Or I want to see like a, a a big Super Smash Bros. style Zack Snyder universe movie because you've said all your movies are set in the same universe. Have you flirted with that idea of bringing somehow bringing Rebel Moon, Army of the Dead, just everything that you could? Well, legally, Rebel Moon guess, and Army of the Dead definitely. Ex can exist in the same, definitely can exist in the same universe. Um, I think I've said that, but you know, there's a character in um, in movie one when they go into. I don't know if I've talked about this. When they go into the bar, there's a Xanadite, and the Xanadite is that blue girl with the kind of glowing, the glowing markings on her. She is 
directly from the army animated series that we never finished. And uh, where they go, where the zombie plague comes from, is a planet they call Xanadu. Well, the scientists call it Xanadu because they're fans of Olivia Newton-John. But they, so they, um, so they go to Xanadu, and in Xanadu, the Xanadites, who basically where the zombie plague comes from, is that she's one of them. So there's an interdimensional thing they go through. So there is a chance of some sort of weird mashup, you know. So oh, cool. Listen, I could pick your brain about this all day. I've got to let you get to the next one, Zach. It's always such a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you so much for the time, man. Congrats on another awesome movie. Awesome. Thank you. Hello, Sophia McKeel. How y'all doing today? Good. How are you? I'm great now. I'm excited to be talking with you both about Rebel Moon Part 2. So Sophia, I'm going to come... <laughs> Sophia, I'm going to come to you first. Uh, in the first movie, Cora, largely trying to resist the sort of warrior that lives within her. And in this one, it becomes pretty much a war epic by the time it is wrapping up, which means Cora is really doing what she's good at, which is fighting to survive and fighting for people. Uh, and for you as a performer, I mean, I'd love to hear about what sort of new challenges and opportunities that presented to you on a Zack Snyder film. Uh, the challenges uh, for me, it was really about... I know so I'm weird, right about like holding the gun in a way to where it was believable that I've done that my entire life and that I was very, very good at it. And I, I was a bit intimidated by that. And I um, and the other part is just like, I mean, just the the the, the epicness of it all, the size of it all, us as actor to step onto sets like that. I mean, it, I think I think it only bettered our uh, performances because it was just uh, it was just all there for us yeah uh and, and mikhail you in the first rebel moon uh the part one of rebel moon uh gunner is he ends up having to put some big boy pants on to to start some fights to be a hero and in this one he's also embracing being a fighter uh on velt and so i'd love to hear what was probably the single craziest moment that a Zack snyder battle sequence uh made you experience as gunner for part two uh, well, the the first one that comes to mind, it was also one of my favorite moments uh, while we were shooting part two, uh, when all hell breaks loose at the start of the big battle, there's a there's an explosion that sends us flying through the air and we land in a river. We did that stunt ourselves, which was really fun. We used a trampoline for the fall. I like that a lot. <laughs> and then we get out of the water and we have to go. We, we tried to do it in, in one, in like a continuous take. So we come out of the water, both of us, and um, and and then we we try to get on onto these these Mike. space horses that we call uh, Urakis in in the film. But in reality, they're the largest horses on Horse. Earth, and um, you know, wearing like green masks and things that that get added on later in the edit. Uh, to get on those horses, I would have to first get on a, a sort of like a ledge. So that from that ledge, I could jump to the hor onto the horse, except for whenever I came, whenever we came up running to get onto the horse, the horse would move slightly. Yeah. And every take, it would get further and further away. Our and pants were wet and impossible, to, no stretch. I to could not lift possible. my legs anymore. <laughs> so like, we've done like two or three takes, and you kind of feel like we need to nail this now. And every time the horse kept, mo kept, kept moving, so by the third take, I thought, God, it, whatever happens, I'm getting on this horse and as I'm as I'm trying to jump on I realize oh no I can't lift my leg high enough and I land on that horse and it was one of those like oh just keep going come on Cora <laughs> kind of moments did you and Ed Skrine ever talk about the fact that the two actors who played Dario Naharis were in the same movie together now yeah we spent like about five seconds talking about that <laughs> and uh because it was also the first time we met and and uh Right. And, 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 and we, yeah, that was, uh, we, we, uh, we acknowledged it and then we moved on. That's funny. That's funny. Uh, and so I, I, I imagine filming any pair of movies back to back is quite a feat of endurance, but it sounds like Zach, when we see these director's cuts, these are not just two movies back to back. These are Zack Snyder movies with loads of content. That's going to seemingly add to the depth of rebel moon and extra scenes that we're not getting quite here on these first releases. So what sort of like test of endurance was it to film back to back Zack Snyder films? I mean, we spent more time in costume than yeah. than in our, our personal lives during those nine months. Yeah. yeah, it's a very immersive experience. Yeah, very immersive. And it was very satisfying, I think, to I mean, from for me to go into my backstories and come back into uh, like live and then go back into 
sort of just finding all the arc basically was was a lot of fun that's awesome well thank you guys so much congratulations i really enjoyed this one and it is a war epic it's really cool brandon davis comicbook.com ed fra how y'all doing hi bro brandon hi everybody sideshow collectibles man it was so incredible you are the man i'm grateful <laughs> thank you dude of course wait did you go over and see sideshow yeah what was it? What did, what did, well, I know some of it you can't talk about, but I assume you saw some dope art and stuff. Yeah. yeah I find NDAs, but yeah, amazing sh- comic book geek heaven. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> oh, it was amazing. It's genuinely the best. Fra, are you one of us? Are you big, are you big into the geek space at all? Yeah, I have not been to a comic convention and I'm got it. I, gosh. I've got, well, the first chance that I had to go as, you know, as like a guest or whatever whatever you're called, panelist, I don't know, mm-hmm. was uh, for Hawkeye, but it was during COVID and they were cancelled and I was absolutely raging. It's the best. But I've heard you speak about it and like going to them with your kids and like I've always, always wanted to go uh, and sort of immerse myself in it because I love, you know, these movies and I love these TV shows, but I've, I've never gone and as- with the assembly of, of fandom. And no, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It's like the enthusiasm that you see, that we'll see. We've got a fan screening tonight and fan screenings are so much better than premiere because you get that genuine yeah, feedback. Yeah. You know, you look them in the eyes, you can see if things are, uh, you know, the, the things that interest them, especially with Q and A's, they ask the right questions. Same thing at Comic-Con, same thing with you. Every time it's questions that are informed and with enthusiasm. So yeah, I love it, man. Oh yeah, well thank you. I hope you guys have fun tonight. Actually, that's a fun question I would love to hear you guys talk about. Cause I remember like, you talk about seeing things with fans and I remember like Avengers Endgame, like that opening weekend, the crowd reactions, and it was like going to a sporting event. Do do you have like a favorite, whether it's a movie experience of something that it was like your premiere or just a movie that you went and watched that was just like, you felt that sort of energy that's just unmatched. What was sort of your favorite first time watching a a film? Avengers Endgame. Yep, God, I went there with my my huge. son yeah. and uh, his friend and 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 my missus and, and a whole bag of us. And um, you know when we were when we walked in, you could just feel the set. The the excitement was palpable. Anyone that was walking past me coming out of the theaters, I was like making sure I couldn't hear nothing. When we came out, and my son was like, "Oh, that bit," I was like, Shh, mm. "Don't say nothing. We can't ruin it for anyone else." That was epic, but. For Deadpool, me, Tim Miller, um, his wife and daughter, we went to, we snuck into one of the screenings, uh, one of the, you know, normal screenings in LA, like the week that it came out. And it was so cool to be there and to, to, to see that. It was really, really, really awesome. And then afterwards, we were chatting to some of the people as well. And it, it was, it was real cool, man. <laughs> that was, that was wicked. Yeah. I saw Avengers Endgame as well. The cinema had just such a similar experience. It has come very, very close recently with the British final of The Traitors on BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Which was amazing. I hear the American version's class as well, but oh my God, that was thrilling television. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. But these people, like, 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 to be fair, Infinity War was as well. Um, but like these kind of events, I don't know, they just come around so rarely. Mm-hmm. And it was almost like after Endgame, it's like, I don't know when then, like, you know, I don't know where, I can't, I don't know where the next The last Spider-Man is pretty class. Listen, true. Yeah. It's, it's up for grabs right now. Who knows? Uh, but I hope yeah. you guys have fun tonight at your, at your Rebel Moon screening. That's going to be an awesome experience. You know, I, exactly. and I, I find it interesting because we, we talked about Infinity War and Endgame right now. Those are two movies that film back to back. Rebel Moon filmed two movies back to back. And not only was it two movies back to back, it was two Zack Snyder movies where we know we're going to be getting longer extended cuts that are anywhere from three to maybe four hours long once they're said and done with. What was it like to uh, do these back to back? Was it really a test of endurance to like anything you've ever experienced before in in filmmaking? Yeah, I was mashed up by the end of it, man. It was really hard. <laughs> it was so. It's like there's no hiding it on uh, um, no two ways about it. It was it was so so hard, and I'm so glad I did it, and I'm proud of it, and you know have some great. Um, you know, met some amazing, wonderful, beautiful people out of it. But it was super tough, super, super tough. But um, yeah, it comes with the territory. When you watch the movie, you can see like, you can't make a movie like this without it being tough, you know? Oh yeah. Um, 
But um, in that heat wave in the summer, yeah, I I arrived in October, I think, and you know our crossover was such the handing of the baton. Ed's final scene was actually May first, and it was quite moderate temperature outside. <laughs> I did most of my stuff in a well air conditioned studio, so I was. I in felt I felt their pain. Yeah, I felt their pain. I got off very easy. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you guys were both so good at being bad. I mean, you guys are excellent villains, and uh, I I really enjoyed Rebel Moon Part Two. So thank you guys so much for talking with me about it. Thank you, buddy. thank you, man. Cheers. Much love. I'll see you next time, man. I'll right. see you soon, man. I'm glad they I'm glad they had you, dude. I'm glad you had a good time. Have fun tonight. Uh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Thanks, man. I All appreciate right, guys, you. Later. What's up, Rebel Moon? How y'all doing today? Hey, hey Brandon. How are you? How you doing? We the rebels. That's right. Oh, I was going to ask, like, do you guys have like a, a group name yet? Like, because I can't, like, I don't know what the is, like <laughs> Rebel Mooters. Uh, no, we do sing, we do dance. I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. uh, we just don't have a name for the group yet, but uh, okay, we're we'll cultivating it. We'll find one. We'll find one. Yeah, yeah. Find one. <laughs> yeah it's like there's like the Oppen again. homies now. Like, they have their whole thing. So the Rebel Mooners need like a. I don't know. We'll the figure mooners. it out. We'll in the, figure if, you, out. In the moon, if you're a mooner in the UK, it means you show your derriere. So we can't be called oh. the mooners. That would be <laughs> yeah. unsound, unsavory. Yeah. But we'll that find it. We'll find rebellious. one. I'll, by, I'll try to get it by the end of this interview. Let me see if I can put it off. Yeah, well, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. J all right, while you think of that, John, I'm going to come to you with uh, my first question here. You, you have an awesome background uh, in fashion, and also you just always look effortlessly cool. I don't know. You just oh, ooze kind of coolness amen. everywhere you go. Amen. And as Titus, it's no exception. So I'd love to hear about, with that background in fashion, when you were looking at Titus and everything he's wearing, did you have input on that? And what did you, did you look at what he was wearing? And what did it kind of say to you to help you understand the character even more? Uh, Titus fashion. Uh, did I have it? So many. Uh, what I, it, very, uh, I would say lightly, uh, more, and it mostly has to do with the comfort of wearing the clothes, yeah? Uh, if something didn't feel um, comfortable, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, then I would, you know, suggest that uh, we do a slightly different. Often time when you're doing these, uh, some of these costumes, again, for Rebel Moon it's slightly different, but some of the, sometimes you're doing these, these costumes and uh, certain aspects of it you f kind of forget, you know, sometimes you can, when you have a, a full-on costume, you forget that you have to use the restroom at oh, times, yeah. right? Yeah. And so the <laughs> costume will completely just... build and all that, and then you find out later that you have to take the whole costume off <laughs> in order to... Uh, yep. mm -hmm. uh, but it's... Um, I, I did like uh, the combination of this warrior, uh, the part that is military, the part that is, you know, uh, uh, renegade, uh, you know, sort of like runaway, uh, almost like a runaway soldier, um, yeah. uh, and a gladiator. Um, it was all sort of like, um, you could tell through his costume that uh, there's a bit of history, there's a bit of a back history there, right? And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it was... That's awesome. At least I'm going to come to you next. Uh, you, I feel like in this, this part two, you got to spend more time with more of the cast, especially in action scenes together, some really cool uh, emotional moments. I'd love to hear about the differences in the experience for you from part one, part two, when you got to work with people more uh, intimately and just more action-packed sequences all around, too. Yeah, I mean, I was so excited because we actually we shot chronologically, so I remember feeling so right? much FOMO wow. the first, yeah. like, however many weeks that you guys were shooting. Um, but yeah, Emilius essentially goes from one group of rebels to another, and um, it was just it was a pleasure getting to spend pretty much every day with with these wonderful yes, you actors. Can imagine and the, the, uh, <laughs> you can know, when she speaks of the pleasure and all, you know, a bit of sex. It was more pleasant for us. I mean, <laughs> driving them two driving together, the absolutely. <laughs> Criminal, right? They are criminals together. He's still smiling though. As I always say, he's still smiling. Hey, we got him through days. We also gave him a headache mm. once in a while, but we got him through days. Give us, give, give us that. We did. We got you through some days. Well, we're together here. <laughs> we obviously we went through some days. Yeah. We got through some days. Yeah. Uh, Staz, in, you, yep. in, this, in part two, you mm. get to really unveil the full backstory of your character as well. So I'd love to mm. hear when you first signed on. Is that something Zach told you out of the jump? Did you get to collaborate with him on that? What was it like to kind of bring that to life in the scene where everybody's kind of talking and getting to know each other? Yeah, um, Zach was, you know, really, really gracious in the sense that 
for someone who'd been working on this for three decades to still give room for the actor to collaborate, I I embed them themselves into it in, in, in enough of a way where they could really personally connect is, is something we're very, I think we were very lucky to have. Um, and again, very informative to the performance itself. You know, when you know the well that you're drawing from, it can inform every mm. single scene. And, you know, along with, as he just said, filming chronologically, mm. it was wonderful to have all that information from the beginning uh, because it allowed you to kind of map out a, a clearer kind of road to redemption, a road to happiness, joy, unity, many, many other emotions.